So you can call to order. Okay. All right. All right, seeing the presence of a quorum, I'm going to call this meeting of GOL to order. It is November 17th, it is 10.32 a.m. And pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. I will give you instructions on that if that occurs. No person in attendance no, excuse me, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Just gonna make sure that uh, everyone can be heard and seen, though I'm pretty sure that's true. Uh, Pat? Aye. And President, Andy. whatever. <laughs> Present. Andy. Okay, so they, uh, we have three members this morning. Um, Darcy has informed me she will not be with us. She's uh, ill. And I have not heard from Sarah. Um, she may be joining us later. I'm not sure. Um, let me just take a quick look. Uh, at the moment, there are no public in present, but we'll check later. Um, so I am going to just take a quick look at the agenda with you all. And then, um, so share screen. And uh, there it is. Let's take a quick look here. Is that, can everyone see that? Is that big enough? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have four zoning laws to look at, zoning bylaws to look at, and um, we will do that first. Uh, then I'd like to have a brief discussion, uh, sort of a very brief discussion on the FinCom interviews. Um, and then uh, item seven is not ready for prime time. We can talk about it briefly, but I have nothing to show you. Item eight, um, there's lots to talk about and uh, hopefully we'll spend a little bit of time on that. Um, then we have two sets of minutes to approve. And at the moment, oh, I have nothing that is unanticipated. So we're gonna get right to it. And um, I'm gonna put that away. Uh, okay. And the uh, first item is uh, zoning bylaw. Let me see, article three. So let me find that here. Mixed use uh, buildings. Mixed use. Okay, that is open. I'm going to put that on the screen. All right. All right. Can. Yep. Okay. No, I just wanted to make sure it was the one from yesterday. Ah, this is this is the one you were talking about. So yeah. let me start. Well, no, this is not the one I was talking about this morning. I wanted to make sure this is the one I sent you yesterday. All right, well, let's take a quick look at it. It I says November I 16th at the top. Yeah, and yeah, it, has, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is, right, okay. So, so this is, is the one that you yes. want us to look at. That is correct. This is the correct one that yes. uh, CRC recommended yesterday. Okay. okay. And everything, uh, the changes are in front of us. Uh, so under standards and conditions, uh, a number of, a bunch of text has been deleted. Um, and then the new text, and please correct me if I'm mistaken here, the new text is this section right here, right? right? It, is, so, yeah. it is all of that, not just what is highlighted in yellow. Okay, all right. So let's take a moment for those who haven't had a chance and, to look at it. Yep. Go could ahead, I Andy. explain one more thing? And please, in Article 12, if you page down farther, there are two new definitions. Um, both yeah. those definitions that are in bold italic are are proposed for addition. The one highlighted is what came in yesterday, and that was in direct response to the attorney recommending defining permit granting authority. And they determined that adding it into this proposal in the definition section was within the scope of everything, but it would obviously apply to not just mixed use revision, mixed use buildings, that definition would apply throughout the bylaw. Yeah, about uh, throughout this bylaw, I take it. Throughout the um, entire zoning bylaw, not oh, just the mixed okay. use bylaw. And how does that work that just that just by putting that in in this particular? Well, because it's going into the definition section. So ah, it's definition, the definition okay, in right, the bylaw. Right, um, right, right. The whole, that's right. what Article 12 is. That defines right. terms. Definitions and that term is used in the parking bylaw. It's used right. throughout. And, right. and KP law basically said, you should define that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
that item actually was in your packet. I did, yep. uh, we did not get the official letter, but I think that's fine. That can go to the council when we actually take this to council. Um, but for us, we had an email that uh, basically stated exactly what Mandy has just stated from KP Law, um, giving a clean bill of health to all three of the bylaws we'll be looking at first and also stating uh, the point about definition 12.37. So and we have that in our packet. We've had a there is that it. little thing, George. Why don't we start down with uh, the definition? Just okay. there's one little, it looks like in should be in accordance with Article 3. Am so I let's wrong see. Um, this is 12.37 permit granting authority. 3 4. Oh, 3 4. Mixed use building. Mixed use building is a building containing one or more dwelling units in combination with permitted non residential uses in accordance. To with. or accordance with, which with I think is probably it. Accordance with I think so, Article but... Three. I don't think it could be an in accordance in. That's no, definitely not in. Not in. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be with. I think. In one or more. I think with. Thank All you, right. Mandy. Okay. <laughs> You're right, Pat. I uh, know. <laughs> Let's just have a review. Let's just hang on for a second. Review, tracking, tracking is on. And so I'm going to make that change. Um, yeah, why is it not showing? Oh, because you just have a simple markup. It's there. Okay. Well, I should also have what else? Oh, I should have mark. Oh. If you change the simple, to, to um, all, all, it'll show. Thank you. I just see. feel better when I see it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I like the color. Yeah, it changes. So I. It's purple now. I don't know why. Okay. All right. Uh, let's, since we're down here, let's take a look at 3.7 permit granting authority. The planning board is only board of appeals as the bylaw may designate, or if no specific designation, the building commissioner slash zoning enforcement officer. That's the definition of permit granting authority. I have no problem with that. Neither do I. Okay. I think it's the exact language Joel Bard from KP Law yeah, right. Yeah. Right. said to define it as. Right. So <laughs> okay, let's take a moment. Um, I've looked at this once, but I'm gonna look at it one more time. Uh, Mandy's looked at it many, many, many times. Um, yeah. I've also read through it as well. Yes. Okay. And so neither one of you have any concerns. Just give me one last moment. Uh, the first section. Okay. Okay. So, um, I'm you ready for a motion. Yeah, I'm ready for a motion. I move to declare the re proposed revisions to Article Three, Section Three Point Three Two Five, and Article Twelve Definitions. Oh, after Three Point Three Two Five, should say mixed use buildings and Article Twelve Definitions. Um, clear, consistent, and actionable as amended. Second, DeAngelis. All right, we have a motion. It's been made and seconded. Um, I'm going to go right to a vote and uh, start with Mandy. Aye. Pat. Aye. The chair is an aye. So this is carried three to zero with two members absent as amended. So let me just um, uh, share that. And uh, stop sharing. I'm going to put that um, over there. And this is going to 
close. Next item is Article 7, Parking and Access. Let me find that. Um, nope, you would, sorry. The CVS lot rezoning, the parking facility overlay is number as next. Uh, is that? Oh, that's next? Yeah. Uh, yes, it is. Sorry. Let's go there. Okay, let me open that. And just okay. as a refresher, this is, I think the document we'll see says bold is additions, strikeout is strikeout but this is a complete addition to the bylaw. Okay. So basically everything is an addition. Right. right. So we have in front of us, uh, everyone can see it, I take it. Is it size, you can, everyone can read it? Okay. Um, all right. Any concerns or questions people have with this? We go through it uh, quickly. It has a fair amount of text. Um, to say the least, um, it's probably best for us to go through it section by section uh, quickly. Um, let's begin with just the headers. So bold italic text indicates proposed language, strikeout indicates removal. So, so basically everything's proposed, even though not right. everything okay. is bold right. and italic okay. is what I'm saying. Fine, okay. So there's the, the first thing is Article 2 zoning districts is adding a section 2.04 special districts. It's adding to that section the parking mm -hmm. facility district. Okay. And then Article 3, Section 3.32. 3.23 defines right. the regulations regarding that okay. facility district. So the numbering is correct, not that I would know. Um, <laughs> okay. You can keep going, George. Be before you keep going, there is one thing that has been interesting and, and I'd have to look through the whole thing. Up, if you see the title at 3.323, parking yep. facility district is always PFD. Yeah. But at 3.231 applicability, it puts it as PFOD. Hmm. Well, isn't that because it's an overlay district? Well, I'm just saying for consistency yeah. purposes. This should be, shouldn't this be parking facility overlay district? I don't PF. know whether the overlay needs to be there, but we should, wherever it's referred to, it should either have the overlay word in it or it should not, is what I'm saying. For no, consistency, we should pick one. And um, so we so could add says, overlay to the bold PFD parking facility district and that first sentence there. And then we could add overlay to everything, or I think the, or we could delete overlay from the applicability section and change everything that says PFOD to just PFD. All right. Um, what? Hmm. It seems to me it should say overlay. Well, realize the very first section 0.204 special districts, PFD parking facility district. The parking facility district is an overlay district. So it's here PFD refers just to this specific site, correct? It's not a group of, they're not a bunch right. of It defines sites. it as an overlay district on that. Oh, okay, all right. Parcel. So you could argue that once it's been defined as an overlay district, you don't need it. it there's no reason to have it. Yeah. And um, it is at 3.23, it's PFD. At 3.23, again, it's PFD. Um, and then uh, it's only in 3.231 under yeah, applicability. So why, what, is there any reason, rhyme or reason you can think of, Mandy, for why you would suddenly change it? This I think it was facility. just an oversight. So I would say we would strike this. I'm not, we don't necessarily have to do this, but I'm gonna suggest yeah. striking this and striking this. And then changing it anytime they, if they refer to it as PFOD, just deleting the yeah. O. Yeah, that's what I think we'll do. I don't I, have any think, problem with that. I think that makes the most sense. And so it happens a couple times. I think instead of if you line it out like that and doing it under track changes would make it more obvious. Yeah. 
So uh, what we, what are you suggesting? Rather than lining it out, just just remove it, just delete it. Yeah, delete it is because you're tracking changes. So just delete it. Just delete it. Yep. Thank you. That so that we sense. can right you can read it. And delete it needs it. overlay. And any place else so far? Yes, the word overlay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And then we just have to make sure anytime we right. see it. Well, the next one, 3.232 needs to be changed. Yeah, well, let's uh, just go. Down the permitted in the PFOD. Yeah, just, a, just want to read this, y'all. Okay. Okay. I wonder if this is something I should also check with Chris on just to be sure that they're not going to freak out. I, um, I don't see them having a problem because in section two, they referred to it specifically as the parking facility district. Right, exactly. Right? Okay. Right, okay. And there's no way that, yeah, there could be another PFD well, well, I mean, they even referred to it in 3.23, the title, as the PFD, not the PFOD. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Dimensional standards. The following dimensional standards shall apply and replace section 6.17 and table 3 in their entirety. Okay. Okay. Percent maximum code and 5% height maximum feet measure vertical distance from the average finish grade of 3. Okay. Standards and conditions. Okay. I think just punctuation issue here. The permit granting authority shall apply the requirements of section 3.204 design review principles, com oops, principles and standards, comma. Section 7.1 design standards and landscape stand. Okay, that's fine, comma. 7.2 site plan review, comma, and the following. That's fine. I'm sorry. Good. Okay. 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 okay, so does everyone okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Um, the numbering seems fine, as far as I can see. Um, yep. All right. We've made only one small change, so I'm going to. Um, I'm ready for a motion. Uh, I'll make the motion to declare the proposed parking facility district bylaw clear, consistent, and actionable as amended. Second. Is a second is Pat. Thank you. All right. I'm going to go immediately to vote this time. I'll start with Pat. Yes. The chair is an aye. Mandy? Aye. Okay. Again, the, this is approved. The vote is three to zero with two members absent. I'm going to um, save these changes. Um, and I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm going to put that off to the side. And the next is um, 
Article 7, Parking and Access Regulation. Let me find that. This is the one I sent you this morning, just okay. to make it easier to read and understand what changes were actually being proposed. Let's see if I have it here. As I explained, the prior doc yep. there's no changes from the prior document. It's just the prior document showed many different iterations with deletions of prior proposed language that isn't actually in the current bylaw. And so it looked like a lot more was being deleted than actually is type thing. So it was a little hard to understand. Well, let's make sure I have the right one in front of us. So I'm going to share a screen for a moment. We're going to take a look at it and make sure it is the right one. Okay. All right. And is there something quickly we can, is the um, date? That's the clear one. So we can't see what the actual changes are. So we need to stop sharing that. Yeah. Um, and go to, where did I put it is the question of the month. Um, so I could yeah. probably pull it up. Well, you sent it to me um, by Today. email. Okay, hang on for a second. Um, all right, it should be actually, I should have opened it earlier, did I? Okay, uh, I'll open it again. Um, this is, Yep, I see it. Well, Let me what you yeah. what you pulled up just now was the version that clean. if yeah. adopted, it would look like in the bylaw, which is not what we need to be looking at, probably. Uh, I guess it could be, but we should probably be. No, able no, to see. we're going to look at the one you want. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to put that there. All right. Okay, yeah, bear with me for a second. I'm going to put that. Now let's see, this hopefully will be what we want. Yep, this is what we want. So I'm going to share screen. Okay. Okay. And let us share. Yes. All right, so you should have in front of you uh, the third zoning bylaw, which is. Um, uh, okay, Article 7, Parking and Access Regulations. Um, and Ch Mandy, these changes were made when? These have been all, I mean, uh, some of these so, are recent. So this is, this, is, this is showing the proposed changes in green and the proposed changes in red, the strike through the deletions, okay. Okay. that both the planning board and the um, CRC voted to recommend. Okay. okay. So okay. this is sort of what it would look like in the in the motion sheet because it would right. be to add X right. to delete right. Y. Right. Right. Okay. That's why I said it was sort of the cleaned up version of what the right. council will see. Okay. Districts, okay. Okay. So we're gonna look at this. So in this paragraph where it says, permit granting authority may require the applicant to hold sufficient land in reserve in order to provide additional parking spaces that might be required to be built at a later time, parenthesis, shadow parking slash landscape parking reserve, close parenthesis. Explain to me what that parenthesis is doing. That parenthesis is just indicating how um such reserve might be referred to in a plan or um, mm -hmm. in an actual site plan review permit or a special permit that what, what was just defined is generally referred to as shadow parking or landscape parking reserve. So it's just okay. saying that that's how it would be referred to in a permit or on the okay. Okay. site plan, the, the actual documents. Mm -hmm. So 
So the only, you know, whether it would be make sense to move that or just, I mean, it's pretty clear, I think. I don't know, Pat, you feel it's pretty clear. It's not. I know you hate obvious. parentheses, George. Well, yeah. Um, I like it, George, just because you don't. Thank you. That's excellent. Make sure that gets in the no a minutes. Um, <laughs> all are, okay. All right. I think it's, it works. Fine. Okay. All, all kidding aside. No. Okay. Okay. So again, this is simply describing things that the permitting grant authority may um, require, else it mm -hmm. may not. Okay. Okay. There's there's the second to last paragraph is the shall. Okay, let's just which is the parking that. management plan. Okay. So there are a few shalls and there okay. are a few yeah. shall require the applicant. Okay. All right. If no parking will be managed and enforced by the applicant, in addition, the amount of parking spaces provided for each dwelling unit shall satisfy the provisions. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, the rest, okay. All right, we have here parking space requirements under section 001, 002, 003, and 004. Um, I checked the other day because I was looking up here for, oh, oh. <laughs> they're not up there. They're actually in the other, in the actual bylaw. So, yeah. right, and those are correct, I believe. So, okay, that's, I'm satisfied with this. Anyone, any concerns, questions, problems? Okay, then I'm prepared to entertain a motion. I, I'm on a roll here. Motion, um, I move to declare the proposed revisions to Article 7 Parking and Access Regulations clear, consistent, and actionable. Okay. So second. second as, back, we can back. say as presented if we want. As presented, fine. Uh, we've made no changes to this. Um, motion's been made and seconded. I'm gonna go immediately to vote. Uh, the chair is an aye. Mandy? Aye. Pat? Aye. All right, I'm gonna put that off to the side. The uh, motion carries 3-0 with two absent. Um, the final item under zoning this morning is um, continuation of the temporary zoning regarding permitting for certain uses during COVID-19. And this exists, and as we'll see in a moment, all that I have for this is a memo, but the memo includes the bylaw. So I'm going to put that up on the screen and we're gonna take a look at it. Um, so that's the memo. Okay. All right. Um, so the memo is dated October 12, 2021. It's from the town manager to the town council. Um, we have all seen this before, um, but the reason it's on the screen is because attached to it is the proposed zoning bylaw amendment dated 12, 10, 12, 21. And the only change that I see in this document is changing the date from December 31, 2021 to December 31, 2022. Um, since this already has passed muster uh, with KP law back in 2021 um, or 2020 actually probably, um, there is no reason for a KP law review. I do not think since simply changing the date is not a matter of legal concern. So I do not have anything from KP Law on this, um, but I'm assuming it's not needed. And if it is needed, it can be provided to the council um, prior to the time it takes uh, votes on this. So um, since this is the only change, I am prepared uh, to declare um, this Article 14 temporary zoning regarding permitting for certain uses during COVID-19 emergency and its aftermath to be clear, consistent, actionable. Is there a second? Second, DeAngelis. Ha ha, have it, Pat can have it. Pat, Pat gets it, all right, so it's been made. I gotta be doing something here. <laughs> right, I made and seconded, and um, I'm going to go immediately to a vote. I'm gonna start with Pat. Aye. 
and Mandy. Aye. And the chair is an aye. Again, the vote is 3-0 with two absent. The motion carries. Now, um, I don't really look at my emails much uh, before a meeting because I'm busy doing other things, believe it or not. Um, but I have here, because I was looking at Mandy's email um, in order to put it up on the screen, I have here an email from Janet McGowan at time of 10.27 a.m. Yeah, so um, I have not read it. I don't really know what to do with it. Um, uh, so, and i given the late date that it's been given to us. I really don't know what to say. Um, it, we can look at it together, I think, since it is a, I mean, we do have public comment. We could look at it during public comment, though in public comment, we don't actually comment on public comment. Uh, it's not usually something that we discuss. Um, we simply note that it's there. Um, and I don't believe that, um, we can take a look again, whether anyone is present in the public. Um, no, there's no one present in the public. And so I am looking for advice from my colleagues as to what to do with this. My sense is that at this point, um, it can be entered into the record as public comment. I have no problem with that. Um, and I guess I would suggest to the, it's quite lengthy. It goes on for uh, numerous paragraphs. Do you want to look at it or what do people want to do with this? Um, if anything. So, you know, I haven't read it. Um, so I just pulled up my email, but the first sentence, I think the first two sentences that say Sorry. they are not ready for town council based on language, lack of supporting data and consideration of alternative are all substantive matters, not yeah, clarity, right. consistency and actionability yeah, matters right. Right. in the sense that it's not something within our purview. Right, so this is something that I would suggest, I will send an email to the sender later this morning saying thank you for your submission. But in fact, this should be sent to the town council and should be part of the town council's discussion. Okay, I think that that deals with that. All right, um, next item on the agenda is FinCom interview postmortem. And I bring that up only because we have done this in the past. Um, I think it's always useful for us just to think for a moment about how it went. Um, I do obviously, well, I have a thought about it. I don't know if anyone has any thoughts about the interview process itself and how it went. I really didn't you love it. Like, you hate it. You like it. Yeah. Go well, ahead. no, I, no, I didn't like it. I felt I liked having the people together yep. and I can see the value of answering the same question. It certainly brought up some differences that were clear. My concern is with a really with a lack of uh, follow up questions that are more individual to people. And I think Without that, it's not really an interview somehow, and which I didn't think theoretically when we were redesigning it. So that's kind of where I am now. I mean, I have a door I need to shut. Okay. Okay, now we have a moment to say what we really think about Pat. Oh, she's back. No, okay. Yeah, no, I just needed to shut. My no. son's visiting, so I need to go. Oh, good, him. that's nice. Yeah. Um, I had a similar reaction, but Mandy, any thought? I want to say something in a moment, but I had a similar reaction to Pat to how that went. And I took a look at the um, actual guidance that we now have adopted. <laughs> and I, again, think that the chair uh, missed an opportunity to follow the guidance uh, because the guidance doesn't say anything about not allowing follow-up questions, but the chair in his initial uh, statement said there will be no follow-up questions. And I think that was a mistake. And since it wasn't in the, it isn't in the guidance and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I re read the guidance again. And while it says it must be group interviews and there are six questions, or excuse me, there are set questions that need to be sent in advance. It does not explicitly state that there cannot be follow-up questions. It does seem to leave, I think it was deliberate, I think when we did it, to leave certain flexibility. And I think the failure of the chair to allow that or to say, look, everyone will be allowed a follow-up question. Um, was unfortunate because I certainly felt what Pat felt was like, you know, there was more that could have been done, but we were just following this script. 
Mandy, any thoughts on that in terms of either your reaction to the to the interview itself and also to my reading of the guidance, which I am take it to allow follow up questions if the chair and or the committee um, is open to it. But I didn't look specifically and that was one of the things I was going to try and pull up is the new guidance. I know we discussed when we were making recommendations on this policy to the Council. Um, we had in there that the whole committee could vote to have follow up questions and then we deleted something and I forget. Yeah. where we ended up and what sort of our thought as a GOL was when we sent that to the council on whatever we ended up with, right? Um, so if we read that policy to allow follow-up questions, I think, you know, it goes back to the original debate, right? Um, when you have two candidates and the interviews are not that long, maybe it's okay, right? As long mm -hmm. as you try to and give each candidate potentially equal time or equal amounts of follow-up questions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think one of the concerns was that, you know, which we've seen in GOL before, one candidate takes a huge amount of time and another candidate doesn't, or, you know, and that might become, start feeling unfair to a candidate, either the one that has a lot of questions to answer or the one that doesn't, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and so, with two candidates, I think the interviews feel a lot different than when you've got seven or eight or nine. Um, and that makes a difference. So I didn't think that the process was that bad, but um, you know, I, I thought it went fine, but I understand where you guys' concerns are. Um, and if the if the policy allows for follow-up questions, um, at either or, or if the chair believes that that could be a possibility, I wouldn't object to that, but I would request that the whole committee vote on whether to do so instead of it just be the chair's decision and that maybe that vote happen once we know how many SOIs there are mm -hmm. so that we know what kind of interview time we're facing. That makes sense. Uh, the last part of what you said, Mandy. And um, I also wonder. If you you can generalize a follow-up question too. So in an instance where there are two or only three candidates, uh, I think the follow-up question could be given to each of them or something like that. It would take a little bit more on them in the moment crafting before you asked your question, but I think that that's possible. So I have on the screen the current policy, um, which um i believe so statement you, you of interest just, you, yeah, it's interview, sections eight and nine that right. i know we had language at some right. point and then right so here's what now. it says prior to holding interviews the recommending committee shall by majority vote adopt interview questions which shall, which will be asked of all applicants the committee shall consider the adopted selection guidance in developing interview questions the committee shall also solicit questions from the town council in advance time limits for answering questions may be set prior to the interviews okay now, in that chat, in that uh, section, that paragraph, um, there's nothing that that prohibits uh, follow-up questions. Okay, um, it, what it does say is that you must have interview questions in advance, and they must be mm -hmm. asked of the candidate. But it does not say that those are the only questions. Right, but um, I think that we need to comment. Or we need to have something about it in there because the omission can be interpreted that you can't just as easily as you can. I think. Yeah, I mean, I think we as a committee before we forwarded this on to the council had in there that by majority vote, a committee could decide to allow follow up questions and that language was specifically deleted. As we've seen by many KP law memos, KP law would argue then that that meant no. Um, yet, I agree with George, even the first paragraph of interviews just requires that we distribute the adopted interview questions, nothing prohibits adding questions, right? Exactly, it's just, right. There's you can't no language. not distribute yeah, right. the ones that you've already decided to ask. Right. Um, so I would think the plain intent of this is um, it does not prohibit or exclude follow-up questions. What it mandates is that there be a set of questions that be adopted in advance, but it doesn't prohibit. And given all the things the council, I mean, I'm saying against this, Pat, maybe it does make sense for us to bring- No, it's fine. I'm no, not... I'm thinking, no, I'll just talk it out. I, I, I just, uh, it helps me to just talk it out um, briefly. I, 
that we could bring a recommendation to the council to uh, uh, revise section nine, or maybe it would be better in section eight, that um, you could have a final sentence and nothing in this um, paragraph or nothing in this policy prohibits the uh, 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 ad prohibits asking follow-up questions provided uh, the committee um, approves or votes approval. You could do that. Amanda's concerned about a chair. I mean, for instance, in this case that went by, we just had, um, I, if in retrospect, I think I might've thought, you know, uh, I'm just gonna allow follow-up. I'm gonna say at the beginning of the meeting, uh, we're gonna ask each of these questions, but for each question, you may ask a follow-up. Um, of course, the problem is, and that's, you know, well, the follow-up would only be allowed to the person asking the question. Um, it, you know, it, it wouldn't be allowed to the other members of the committee, and that may not be fair. In other words, so Pat's asking a question, it's answered by all the people present, three, whatever how many it was, and then Pat has a follow-up she wants to ask, um, would be one way of reading that. Uh, the other would be anyone may ask a follow-up uh, on the committee, um, and that could end up being, uh, you know, five questions, right? Yeah. So that's, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, go ahead, Pat. Go ahead, Mandy. Oh, I was, I was gonna let you go, Pat. I, I feel like uh, that anyone should be asked to follow, can, should be able to ask a follow-up question mm -hmm. because I feel like everybody gets, has All a right. different response or, or a different perspective. And it, I'm answer, asking the question, I don't have that perspective and I don't, the question gets bypassed, but it's an important question, so. So, so what I was going to say is I'm not sure we're ready to propose revisions per se. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. As we work on a transition memo, we could specifically identify these two this, sections yeah, as right, right. as potential for revisions that would add some mechanism for the allowance of follow up questions. And you know, and and I say that because I have a different potential way of doing it than what's just been mentioned. You know, I, yeah, I, would, I would think about after all the questions because no one gets to pick which question they ask, right? right. Um, that's just sort of randomized. So maybe after all the questions are asked, each counselor is offered an opportunity to ask one follow-up question that would be the same to all counselors, you know? So I think there's a lot of different ways we could structure this, mm -hmm. um, but that needs a lot more consideration, I think. And so I would, uh, mm -hmm. I, I would say that might be best for incoming counselors mm -hmm, to discuss mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, whoever ends up on GOL as a good almost entry into what does this process look like too, right? right and right. and thinking about all of that process too. So I would add it to the sort of continuing carryover items. So you're thinking the transition memo, um... Which, by the way, is that submit? Help me here. Is that submitted to the council, or is that just something I create, and then where does it get sent or put? Is it something the council gets to read? Is it something that just is put in some I pile think of it's documents? I put in the that, council packet to talk about to to the new council. So the new council would be in some packet. Um, I think it's in the old council's packet too. I think it's in this packet. If you read Lynn's email from mid October, I'm sure she'd send it to you again. She's intending on discussing transition memos at one of the council meetings in December. So I guess what I'm asking is what should go into it? Does it describe what she wants in the transition memo? Um, that right email now, did, yeah. It did, okay, so I need to find her transition memo. Okay, hopefully many of the things that I've been working on and we'll look at briefly are part of what she has in mind, but I have a feeling probably not. So I need to look at that again. Yeah. But you're, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, she described a lot of the sort of basics of what needs to be in there, not what I know you and I as chairs are actually thinking would be really helpful to future chairs, which is different than future committees, right? right, right <laughs> and right. so she talked about what essentially, what's what's on the agenda for the new committee when the new committee gets okay, things, right, what's going right, on, what's right. moving on. And so that's why I say, I think this right, issue might right. be something that would be good to put in that as, even though it hasn't been referred, no, exactly. This is something an item that we might identified that could use some conversation. Okay. Okay. Good. 
Good. All right. Well, I will look at that memo, but that that um, makes sense. And then what you and I have been doing as chairs is somewhat different, important, but not not really that. So what I'm hearing is that in that memo, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, that what we're recommending is a review of sections eight and nine of the newly adopted town council policy on recommendations to the council for multi-member bodies um, regarding the question of whether there should be follow-up questions or not. Yeah, and, okay. and how that would be implemented. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. And George, I just wanna mention there's one person in attending, Sharon okay. Sherry. Okay, Sharon Sherry, all right. All right. Um, So anything else about the postmortem? I, that, what Pat picked on is exactly what I had, uh, the feeling that somehow this could have been much better, much more, um, and still have uh, met the letter of the law. Um, but because I chose not to allow follow-up questions, it was somewhat stilted. And, and it still, you know, I think it did what we needed it to do. Um, and uh, that, yeah. I would add one other thing. And this, sure. is, this comes from a concern Darcy had, but I know CRC has struggled with this issue, which yep. is, we declare the pool sufficient to proceed to statements of interest when we have enough in theory applicants, right? Yep. Um, maybe there's a consideration and, and I've had to do it in CRC um, and we had that conversation, but I don't know whether that should be put into the policy um, when SOIs are received, is there another determination of sufficiency? Right. So you know, you said, I, right. I know yeah. as chair in a previous version of a policy before we adopted the council policy, I received SOIs and then I said, oh, we might not have sufficient pool anymore. And so I brought up that issue with the CRC and ask essentially asked them to redeclare whether it's sufficient or not. Um, and whether we should go back and delay the process and all of that. And so maybe some sort of additional language into whatever section it is about the possibility of needing a second review of sufficiency. Mm -hmm. um, right. You know, not, and, and I, I would argue, and this is why maybe the next council needs to take it up, not necessarily if we thought there were say eight applicants for two spots and only seven submitted an SOI, right? But if we thought there were eight applicants for five spots and suddenly we only have three SOIs, mm -hmm. you know, like, but but again, maybe talking about adding in some language somewhere about reevaluating the sufficiency prior to going through with interviews if X, Y, or Z happens. You know, in our case, it was only two, um, so it's kind and of like one this, spot, right? Right, right, right. And um, but you can imagine a case where there's only one, and um, yeah, or and obviously if there were none. <laughs> which I think has been an issue for, for you with ZBA, uh, or potentially it could have been with us. It could have been that, that, that in the end, nobody submitted an SOI. Um, and Darcy's concern was, well, the SOI is an impediment. Um, I'm not sure I agree with that, but I think she makes a good point that, you know, it is something that has to be done. And if a candidate fails to do it, they're no longer a candidate. Right. And so what, so you're, what you're suggesting is that in this transition document, the second item would be to describe that issue and to suggest that they give some thought to um, perhaps a second vote or a second review. A second look at sufficiency of the pool right. under right. certain circumstances or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or, okay. or even, even potentially when declaring the pool sufficient the first time, um, considering what would cause the pool to become insufficient, right? To then pause the process. But, but I think there's a validity in, you know, at this point, basically what you have to do is trust the chair to say, I don't think this is sufficient given the openings. And so I'm gonna tell the council, the, the committee, we need to relook at this, we need to make a decision and proactively do that versus right now, once it's declared sufficient, a chair can say, well, I'm just following the process. And so we might have three openings. We got one SOI, we're going to interviews, um, right? You know, like 
that the policy as it's written now, that could happen. And maybe we need to write into a policy some sort of break point so that that potentially doesn't happen where we're at interviews and three quarters of the committee are saying, why are we here? We have one interviewee for well, five uh, spots. Let me argue the, the other side for a second. Um, okay, that happens. And you only have one, one, one SOI and you have the interview and um, the committee then deliberates. And the deliberation could be that um, we're just not satisfied with this candidate or we decide that, I mean, you could have the interview and go, you know, this person's fine, okay? Um, yeah. You could have the interview and say, you know, this is just not sufficient. Uh, we're going to put this on, we're not going to act. We're going to, uh, you know, we've done the interview with this candidate, but we're going to solicit more applicants and let's say after a week or two, I mean, the problem we've been having is that, you know, people don't flock, they don't, they don't submit applications. Um, and um, given the, the particular positions we're dealing with, ZBA, Planning Board, and FinCom, these are, you know, A, uh, fairly demanding of time and energy, not to say that there aren't other bodies that have that, but these are particularly demanding. And B, with FinCom, there are certain, you know, expectations. Um, a committee could choose to, I mean, we do expect that the candidate have some interest and or familiarity with um, financial matters. It, it, we, I think the guidance is fairly clear that it just can't be, you know, for instance, I would not be a good candidate for FinCom because I have absolutely no background in financial matters. Um, uh, you know, it, it, so anyway, it, it's, yeah. what if no. you let this policy stay as it is and um, the committee goes ahead um, with just one candidate because that's the only person that submitted SOIs, then it's up to the committee to decide what they want to do. And they could go ahead with that candidate. They could say, we're just not satisfied and we want to put, you know, we want to go back and have more, uh, right? Um, rather than trying to come up with a policy that sets, you know, is it three, is it two, is it one, is it five? You know, um, what do you think? I mean, that's the kind of counter argument, which is just let it be. Um, and uh, if that happens, which could have happened to us, fairly recently, it would then be on us as a committee to decide what we want to do at the after the interview was done. But, but I see, I, go ahead. Ahead. I, I feel like it ha that decision needs to be made before the interview. Um, if there's okay. one candidate or there's two, it's not enough. Then not to, to contact them and say, we're going to reach out, you're wonderful candidates, but we need to reach out because we feel like the pool is not sufficient. To interview them and then say that, I think, um, I think that's really awkward. And so, yeah, it's so awkward, guess, but yeah, okay, go ahead, man. I guess my recommendation is things can be awkward, and so some guidance potentially in the policy is to when that consideration might need to be revisited. And I'm just talking about even timing, not necessarily what George is referring to is numbers, just, you know, um, somewhere in, I don't know where the statement of interest one is, whether that's six or seven, but somewhere in that section, potentially adding a, a thing that says, after the deadline for statements of interest, and, and here's where someone needs to talk about language, right? Because that, that becomes very important. The chair or the committee shall reevaluate su sufficiency of the pool um, to ensure that it is still sufficient to continue to interviews or something like that, you know. No. And so again, for the carryover memo, maybe some some other recommendation to consider a second sufficiency determination if yeah, they want it, that, yeah. and if so, when that happens. Okay, that's all. Well, that's what I. Yeah, I'm hearing that that is something that um, I think both of you would like put into the memo, um, and I can do that. Um, the counter argument is just leave it as it is and let the committee decide on a case by case basis what it wants to do. But um, what I'm hearing is at least from the two of you that's that you would prefer at least that they this be noted and that uh, whoever takes on GOL next may or may not choose to revisit yeah. it and that's up to them. We're not going to. I guess basically what I'm hearing and I've certainly endorsed this given all that we have to do and given the, the, the timing, we're not going to 
uh, try to revisit this and, and make a recommendation to council. But in the transition memo, we will note this and then it's up to them to do what they want. Okay, all right. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is the promised committee report to the town council on bylaws for future consideration, draft. It's not ready for prime time. Um, I had much more fun doing other things, which we'll look at in just a moment. <laughs> and when I started doing it, my heart sank, but I, that's too bad for me, right? So I will continue to work on it. Um, it's, it's in my court. Um, I will be in, yeah, go ahead. I, I just uh, continue and then I have a question. I thought you were pausing. Uh, I'm pausing only because, um, yeah, I'm just imagining this task in front of me, but, um, <laughs> and I've managed to find other ways to do other things, which were much more interesting and much easier to do. Um, anyway, Mandy, go ahead. So question, yep. many of those um, bylaws or the recommendations from the GOL are not to make modifications to the bylaws. It's to either leave them as is or send to a committee or you know, basically get the manager to send it to X, Y, exactly. or Z committee. But right. I know there's at least one bylaw where the recommendation was to rescind the bylaw. Yes. And I don't know how many of those there are. I know it was at least one. It might only be one. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. And mm -hmm. so I guess my question is, I think it would be wise if we as a council try and take that action. Yes. Um, and so that would mean the bylaw first reading, assuming there are no rights to postpone, would need to be probably the 6th of December. Yep. Um, looking at council meetings and it would at least have to be posted on the council on the bulletin board by December 6th, that proposed rescission. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as chair, I guess, as a committee member, I would ask that you touch base with Lynn for right. scheduling purposes to potentially add that to the December 6th meeting for a first reading, the December 20th meeting or whatever for the mm -hmm. second reading and vote that particular rescission. And if there's other bylaws where we actually have recommendations to do stuff, exactly. that we get that on other those than, agendas. Other than just referral, right? Yeah. Because yeah, a referral, I believe that could simply be done in one meeting, whatever the last meeting, done at the last right. meeting where you have simply referring. That's right. But rescission, I, I hear you. One of the challenges has been going through the multi multi documents. Yeah. You gave mm -hmm. me one, which was great. Um, there's a memo that we also have. Anyway, I, hear I, you. I understand that completely. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, I guess what I'm trying to say Timeline. is without right. figure out which ones have actual council action that require yeah. two readings. Yep. and posting on bulletin boards and all these other things because their bylaw changes. Right. Focus on them, even if it's two separate reports and get them and at least talk to Lynn about scheduling of that because we're running out of time to yep. have those votes by the end of this council. And I, I feel like we should at least attempt to finish those actions. I agree with you 100%. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing that and um, so I'm gonna put you away. And I'm gonna take a look at this document called committee documents. Put that up on the screen and then we may take a quick little gander at our GOL um, SharePoint site. Let's see here. So, um, currently you can all see that I hope currently um on our um this is our official town website not the, the gol sharepoint um so our public facing um face <laughs> is, are these seven documents along with some other things that athena has very capably and ably put on our site and i i just want us to think about the public face um, so I think the charge should be there. The, obviously the meeting schedule will be new. Um, charge template, I guess should stay there. Maybe that also should be on SharePoint uh, or maybe it is and I just need to find it. I, I'm, I'm going through our SharePoint as well. I'm gonna talk with you for a few minutes about that and then hopefully we'll be able to, to call the meeting to a close. But I just wanted to go through this with you because right now this is our public face and um, so 
I was suggesting, and again, you may want to weigh in on this at some point in the next weeks, but of, um, so this has been changed. Athena went and took away the uh, our policy, which is no longer uh, relevant, and replaced it with the official town council policy. So that has been done, okay? What I was gonna recommend um, is that um, we get rid of six, uh, which is a revised guidelines review, clear, consistent, actionable, and replace it with four, which is the FAQ. And it may be something that I will ask Mandy to look at briefly. Um, I just wanna make sure that I'm not, we could just leave it as is. And any poor soul who wants to, wants to wade through it can go ahead. Um, but this, it seems duplicative and you, I think it's important that it be there. I think that was really an important thing for us to do so that when even members of the council are unclear what we mean by clear, consistent, actionable and what GOL does, we send them there. But right now we have two documents that seem to me to be somewhat overlapping. And um, I don't know if anyone's had, I assume you probably haven't had a chance to look at them, but um, before I just go ahead and deep six, six and replace it with four, um, I would value any of us taking a look and saying, oh, wait a minute, no, 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 you need both. Or wait a minute, um, six is actually better than four. That's my only concern. So I, that's the last thing I'm gonna do, but I'm not gonna do it in the next week or so, but eventually if I don't hear from anybody, I'm gonna get rid of um, six and, and just leave four. Okay, and that's our public face. If there's anything you think also should be there that's missing, if there's anything there that um, is wrong, <laughs> right? But I, I think at this point, we're pretty good. So um, I just wanted to alert you to that. Mandy, any thoughts? Thoughts on this, and then I actually wanna, I guess it's similar things, transition to new council, another carryover measure that I just remembered. But yeah. um, on this one, I actually looked at four and I looked at six and much of six is in four word for word, yeah. um, you know, and so they exactly. are very duplicative. I liked four better um, yeah. because it actually gave examples of yeah. potential things. So I thought that was fantastic. Uh, one thing I don't like about four is the title. Title, yes. UL FAQ right. final. Yeah. It right. does, tells, tells people nothing. Nothing, I agree. No. <laughs> you know, and so I think we need to revise the title to something like, GOL FAQ on review for clarity, consistency, and actionability, or something like that, yeah, or agree. review agree. of measures, or something that gives them just like the one number five gives people an idea of exactly what it is. And then because I think we formally adopt, I don't know whether we formally adopted both or one of them. I assume we adopted both. You know, since the wording's nearly the same, I think removing number six from the website mm -hmm. is fine. I don't think we necessarily need any other votes, but I would definitely change the title of number four. And suggestion would be something like uh, guidelines for, what do you think? You could just use it, to, right. Or, um, or, or right. FAQ on re review of measures, clarity, consistency, and actionability. It's, it's a long thing, right? Um, yeah. What if but we even take, just even review of it, measures, guidelines, yeah. or FAQ on re review of measures or something. Gu guidelines on review of measures for clarity, consistency, and actionability. Something like that. I agree with you, uh, Pat. It sounds like you have no trouble with this. Let's get rid no, of I'm six. Not having a problem. Get rid of six and just retitle four. And right now the suggestion is guidelines on review of measures for clarity, consistency, and actionability. The fact that it's an FAQ really doesn't matter. That's right. just a, a way, but the, what's important is that somebody says, what do these guys mean by clarity? And this would tell them, go here, and hopefully that will tell you. Um, and this, this tells you what the differences are between the four different uh, measures, um, which I think, uh, right, and um, good. All right, so I will do that. So the, and, the other uh, thing I remembered for carryover is when we were dealing with the policy to make recommendations for the council, there was a whole appendix part of that policy that we basically said we shouldn't touch until the council's adopted the policy. And that appendix 
actually should be a different document, but was the sort of FAQ on what to expect if you're applying for a appointment to these multiple member bodies. It was sort of that what to expect documents similar to these FAQs for the public. Yeah. And we said we'd come back as GOL after the actual recommendation policy yeah. was adopted because we didn't want to spend time doing the FAQ right, if right. things were going to change. And so right. the new council could probably do the FAQ, which is sort of the from the resident side, what's this process look like? And I've got to dig that up. I, I know exactly what you're referring to. What I'm not clear on is where the heck I put it. Um, yeah. Because we separated it out. Um, right. And then, okay. we, yeah. And where do you think that might go? Uh, it could go. Um, I think it goes in the same part where we're talking about these, just that policy carryover of measure carryover of items the next GOL can deal with. So it's actually in that transition memo. Yeah. Um, and it could be attached to that or it could just be referred to, but it, yeah. it needs to be somewhere so they can find it. I, I so would that attach means I have the to old find one it first. that's I'm out sorry. of date. You have I'm, one that's out of date. Yeah. Just so people can see what we're talking about. All right. I will okay. <laughs> so I need to find that. Um, okay. And I know exactly. It was something I think Evan did, and he did it yeah. very well. And um, it got set, it got detached for good reason. And now I need to find out where it went. Um, okay. 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 All right. Add to transition memo. Okay. All right. So that's something to be added. So that's three items for the transition memo and finding that document, find find this. I will give this to staff um, and they'll get on it right away. <clears throat> for those in the public, that was a joke. All right, um, I'm gonna stop sharing then, is that okay? Mm -hmm. For that, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, put you aside there. All right, next. Um, what do I have here? Discussion of GOL website and committee documents. That's really what we've been doing, actually. Um, the only other thing, and you may want to do this, um, so if I can actually share this with you, because um, I'm really proud of it. <clears throat> I'm just showing off. Um, where would I find it is the question. Um, hang on for a second. Um, open up GOL, it's just here. Okay. All right, except maybe hard to read. Okay, yes. All right, good. I'm gonna share this with you a second, ask your advice, and then I'll stop showing off. Um, here we go. All right, because I really do need your advice on this. So this, if you, it's a little confusing, and I, someone who understands this, my computer better than I do, could make this look better. But this is our SharePoint uh, site, okay? And so when we, um, when the new GOL starts up in January, I wanted this to have in it everything they would need uh, that we could think of. Um, so I was thinking of, of getting rid of certain things that I think are, are no longer necessary. Um, and since this has been the work of, of uh, Mandy, a great deal of work is, she's put into it, I didn't want to start throwing things out um, without her okay. My feeling is that um, so here's the stuff that I have put in. Um, this is again, thanks to Mandy. Don't click on it. I'm sorry, yeah, absolutely, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> just, just pointing it out. Um, so um, should have been doing this probably all along, but there's a place now where you can find all the CAF. There is a, uh, this I can show you, but this again is modeling what Mandy was doing for CRC. Um, here's a set of all sample documents, okay? Um, email documents and fin, um, all stuff related to FinCom, okay? And what I would suggest, if it's possible, is for all of you to take a look at some of these new additions and look it over and see if anything's missing. See if you think, well, wait a second, what about X, what about Y? Um, because I just wanna make it as useful as possible. Obviously, meeting packets and agendas, that's where hopefully some of you occasionally do go uh, rather than to, uh, to our official website. People can do either. 
I think, uh, right, I prefer to use SharePoint, but whatever, it's there, meeting packs and agendas. We've been doing that all along. This I'd like to get rid of. You can um, get rid of that. Yeah, okay, but I, I wanna make, and I'd like to get rid of draft minutes and uh, committee reports. Uh, actually, I could. Um, I would I keep the committee reports. Okay, so what I might do is I go back and I haven't been putting them in here, but it wouldn't take me that long. It's the kind of task that I like because it, you know, actually you can accomplish it. <laughs> it doesn't require a great deal of thought. Just, I could just put as many as I can find in there. Um, approved minutes, I do do, um, but draft minutes, I don't. So um, do you, I mean- It's fine with me if it's yeah. gone. Yeah, it's fine I, if it's gone. Okay, fine. So I take those two out. I take out approved adopted policies and procedures. Um, Cause if you open it and look at it, um, it's, it's, you know- It might even be out of date. Yeah, it is all money. So I would just take it out. If somebody wants, I mean, whoever the next chair is can do whatever the heck they want. Yeah. Um, but um, I was going to try and make it simpler. So, um, and so that's what I was, I wanted you're okay on that. And before I start throwing things out. Um, so I've added the finance committee. Uh, this again is based on what Mandy's been doing. And um, so I did create an Excel spreadsheet that lists everybody that's applied following your um, model. So again, yeah. people can look at it. Uh, Pat particularly just glance at it and say, oh, that's nice. Or you say, wait a minute, that's, not, that's useless. Why are you doing this? GOL chair duties, um, I have a draft, that's a draft. Um, I always appreciate input on that. I could send it to you individually if you want. Um, it's kind of wordy, I'm afraid. Um, I thought you I, did send it. Uh, I don't know if I did. Um, I think so, it's in the packet. Yeah, it's in the packet. So yeah. yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. So good, I can go back then. Um, let me see if I can do that without creating chaos. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, good, I did it right. All right, so uh, our charge is here. GL chair duties is here. My, this is my personal favorite. <laughs> I, I'm so proud of this. Very helpful, I'm sure. And, it is, and, actually. And you can actually click on a link that takes you to the most recent version of the proclamation. Oh, wow. Um, it's just That's awesome. awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, I'm the person who believes there is no ego. Town council policy. What is, oh, this is the official policy. That's the official policy on recommendation. So if you think of anything that you think would be useful to be on this for a future GOL that is not on it right now, just send me an email or okay. just tell me right now. Or if you have time, sounds like some of you have already done it, look it over, um, especially the new stuff and just say, yeah, that's, that's okay. Or wait a minute, it's right. Because otherwise this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take out um, voted documents. I'm gonna take out um, draft minutes and adopted policies. The only thing that I can say is, uh... oh for um, agenda, for our meetings, the yep. agenda packets. Right. I, and this, I don't think you need to do necessarily, but maybe Athena or get, get all, do it like the council does where you have the current meeting and then everything else is in a, in a separate folder. Um, Cause I hate going through that list. I know it's down at the bottom you know, blah, blah, blah. I hear blah, you. But, okay. So here's- Yeah, this that's is, minor this, and it's not important if it doesn't- This is a simple practical question that has a simple answer to which I can, I don't feel like it's, I can bother Athena with this kind of crap, but I just can't figure out how to, I mean- I was yeah, How to move? Out. Yeah, yeah, right. So, so, right, right. so somewhere put, in here, if you page all the way up- All the way up, yeah. There's, there's see that see all that you see? Hang on for a second. No, no, see, no, just- right. When yeah. you click on that, then you have the ability to move stuff between. Oh phones. my God. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. That's very helpful. I will do that. <laughs> no, I mean, how am I supposed to know that? How's anybody? I, it to took, know I didn't that? know that. that out. But that is, <laughs> then you will have the ability to like drag and drop. This is, between this is phones. a Microsoft product. Is this a Microsoft product? Yeah. It must be. It must be. They are such. Right. So Thank once you. you click the see all, then you have the ability Thank to drag you. and drop. Thank you. See, Athena could have told me that in a heartbeat, but there's a reason if she's that listening, we allow Mandy to be on this committee. There's <laughs> many reasons. But anyway, Athena, the reason I didn't ask you is because I it's just not fair to ask you these stupid questions. <laughs> so anyway, good. I will do that and I will try to so your thought, Pat, is you like everything, all previous meetings in a separate packet. 
But yeah, the it's just for, much right. easier. Okay, I'll see if I can do that for the last or, meeting or two, yeah. because then it's a model that the next GOL chair yeah. can follow if they want, or they can just blow this all yeah. up. And do but it's so different. easy when I go on the council website to it. go okay. right to the meetings that I okay. need. Okay. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Go to see all. I love to put this stuff in order. Okay. <laughs> Andy, what else can we come up with? There's got to be something else well, to make. That's your assignment. Well, that's all your I can homework. say is, George, you know, I, I know it how is. much work this takes to get this all ready. So thank you uh, for doing it for GOL. It's, it's my uh, so pleasure. she's going to yes. take you out for drinks. Uh, absolutely. As long as you better. take me out because, you know, I'm doing it for CRC. <laughs> how about I take you two out? That but, would be, um, that, I think yeah, no, right. I, I just, right. yeah. it, it, I don't yeah. think as a fellow chair, I'm, I don't know how many people realize how much work getting all of this together yeah. Yeah. for the transition. Well, the, pub the public present so today will certainly, they will, they will understand yeah. the public present today, which is uh, still, uh, no, I think uh, our public Sharon is still here. She, she's still here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. We should well, ask for public comment. I think this is the point in the meeting where we um, <laughs> look to see if the public is present. And um, for some reason, my screen isn't showing it at all. There is a raised hand. All right, there's a raised hand. And I see oh. the, yep, ah, oh, there we go. There's a raised hand. And so I'm going to draw the public in. Um, this public is named Sharon Sherry. So if you would simply uh, state your name and your address. And Hi, then, everybody. This is Sharon Sherry, the director of the Jones Library here in Amherst. Uh, oh. I just wanted to say, hey, I stuck it out this long. You guys are adorable. I just got to <laughs> say you guys are adorable. And I do appreciate how difficult it is uh everything that you guys are doing absolutely and <laughs> i have enjoyed listening to you um it just do all of this work very collaboratively and i i think that's awesome i originally wanted to join in in the beginning of your meeting and then i got sidetracked and so um so i missed the actual topic that i was Sharon, interested in yes what i want to say to you even though this is public comment is that because uh you were there our banter was reduced and subdued. So. Right. We actually cleaned up our act because we actually had public presence. Well, um, I am clapping for you right now. I totally appreciate that as well. <laughs> the you item guys, that, yeah, nope. the item that you had concern about, I may be happy at this point. Oh, concern is too strong of a word. No, I was just interested in the, it was the rezoning oh, discussion. Oh, uh, the, of, the, the parking overlay? Yeah, which, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we just we uh, passed that along so that those all four zoning items uh, were reviewed by us and we only look at clarity, consistency and actionability, which we'd love to talk to you about at great length if you have more time. But we, <laughs> we only look at that. We do not discuss the substance of issues. So whether While she's here, yes? I'll just say CRC recommended the council adopt it by a four to one vote last right. night. That is spectacular. And they, I'm and thrilled. They, they do deal with substantive matters. We we are just the across the uh, across the T's and dot the I's committee. So and so what, what's so great about these subcommittees is I actually just as a listener I get to I I get to we as residents get to know you all as counselors more because more of your, you know, individual personalities come out. Yeah. And, and so I think that's great. Uh, I love your sense of humor, George. And yeah. I got to say, Mandy, the he way one? <laughs> <laughs> Mandy, Joe, the way you run a meeting is uh, exceptional. Um, so yeah. Anyways, right, I appreciate you something about me. Right? <laughs> I'm sorry. Really Pat, Pat, I haven't. I actually, <laughs> I haven't seen you run a meeting yet, so I I, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, there we could go. Could be next council. Actually, could be her opportunity. It could be. It could be. Yeah, I right. appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Sean. Bye. Okay. Uh, this is just a public announcement for those who may be viewing this uh, now or later. Um, we did not pay Sharon Sherry to come today and make those comments. Just letting you know that was okay. Um, and also, you can see what a sense of humor does you out in the real political world. Nothing. <laughs> but thank you very much. Um, so that's public comment. Uh, we have two sets of minutes that I would really like to move along. We have the October 20 and November 3, 2021 minutes. The chair has looked at them carefully. 
And as usual, they've been done with the, the usual level of skill and uh, expertise. I have no changes to make. Does anyone have any changes they wish to make to either October 20 or November 3? Seeing no hands raised, I'm going to make the motion to approve the October 20 and November 3, 2021 minutes as presented. Is there a second? Are we fighting over it, Pat? <laughs> I need a second. I'll second. <laughs> Thank you, Mandy. Um, any further discussion? <laughs> Other than, again, gratitude to Emily and to uh, Athena yes. for all that they do for yeah, us you, Emily. behind the scenes. Um, thank you. All right, so uh, we'll go to a vote. To start this time with Pat. Uh, aye. And Mandy. Aye. And the chair is an aye. The fees and minutes are approved. The vote is three to zero with two absent. All right, future agenda items. Um, just briefly, how are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing okay. Um, huh. Other than the things I need to do related to this, the future by, by or future consideration, um, what do people see coming in the, obviously there's a transition memo that I need to be working on there is the report I need to be working on. Um, I always like to share this with people in advance, but often I'm doing it at the last minute, so it's not fair, but I will do my best to get it to you in advance. If you wish to look at it, you certainly don't have to. Um, but as far as things coming up. We don't think, have the reorganization at all, right? Uh, that's TSO with a that's little TSO, bit of yeah. My, the yeah, council didn't my, seem to think this committee needed to do it all with it, right? Yeah, it was, it was one to 12 yeah, on that one. So uh, yeah, we that do not have time. Yeah, we um, will have the uh, temporary moratorium coming, I believe. Carry Separate. over to next term. Yeah, um, I think so. CRC, I'll, I'll, I'll be sending an email to Pat, you and, and Lynn as sponsors today about CRC's schedule for the hearing. Right. So we won't be seeing that. We won't. Be the GOL that. will not be seeing it till next term. But I guess that okay. should probably be on the carryover as a reminder that um, yes, please. GOL will need to look at it, and that might be a very extensive. But, but actually, this one may may not or may for not, the temporary um, moratorium. The moratorium may or may not be extensive. Um, it is, but it will not be it's legal. It's been written by KP Law. Blah blah yeah. blah blah. The, the carryover will be there, so it's technically a carryover mm -hmm. referral. So I clarify here for a moment, I'm sorry. Um, the, um, the temporary bylaw that's been proposed that was referred. Temporary so moratorium bylaw. Moratorium is always referred to CRC and planning board for hearing, but then it goes to GOL for review of clarity, consistency right. and actionability. Right. So it's technically an outstanding referral at GOL right. on the carryover items. Right. A referral. All right, uh, okay. Are there any December or January proclamations? I'm thinking January, oh. do we do an MLK proclamation? Do we do anything in late January such yes, we that yes, we, 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 should do. we should deal with them in December because of the reorganization of the council okay. we might not be able to get to it till January? That is very good, good man. Good good thing. So proclamations, we do have a human rights day in December. Um, I think it's the United it's the United Nations, isn't that in December? Oh, yeah, the the um, yeah, yeah. the the yeah the de Declaration of Human Universal Rights Declaration of Human Rights, Rights reading right, right. Is, always happens from the right, Human Rights right, Commission generally. Right. right. So um, so December and January Where's proclamations. That proclamations calendar, but yes. December and January proclamations we should probably deal with on December first. Yeah, I will not be in the meeting on December first. So you will be absent. Yeah. Okay. I'll be at a conference. All right. So we may have a quorum issue. I think I will reach out to the other two members and hopefully one of them at least will tell us that they will be there because um, we really can't. Yeah. I, if you want to move the day or the meeting. Uh, uh, yeah. If we have a quorum I, issue, maybe we can move it. I guess. Well, let me yeah, check. And see. Be, I think yeah, I know that's problematic yeah. for you, too, but uh, I'd yeah. be willing to. All right. Maybe we could uh, meet on. Uh, I mean, on Darcy was ill. I mean, so hopefully that was, you know, it, it, she'll be fine for December one. But uh, yeah. we're we're obviously a little shorthanded. So yeah, yeah um, if it weren't important, I would. 
No, I hear you. No. All right. So you will be absent December one. I will look into quorum on that. Um, definitely December, January proclamations um, need to be addressed. And then okay. just thinking yeah. about the transition memo listing right. out, even though you have that fantastic um, schedule, listing out for that transition memo, assuming that that's the basic thing the new counselors on GOL will read, listing out the February proclamations and resolutions so that they have an so idea of what they need to put on their first agenda. I guess as a chair, I'm thinking potentially putting in a transition memo, what the first or for me, it might be the second agenda looks like, like here's yeah. a recommended agenda with a list of items that might need to be those proclamations. Okay, I'm going to hunt up. Um, is transition memo in the title of what Lynn sent us? I have no idea. Yeah, that's let, the let me look, because I still have it in my inbox. Because yeah, yeah. I'm behind. Um, oh, you can see I'm really behind. Carry over <laughs> measures a carry over to measure. new council. Okay, carry over measures. All right. The original one came October 15th. Right, yeah. Carry over measures. That's all I need. Carry and over if, measures. And if I have any problem, I'll reach out time. to you, but I need to get that today and, and, and yeah. start working on it. So carry over measures. I will look at that. Anything else people can think of? So yes, that's excellent proclamations coming up. Uh, transition memo um, for December, January. Um, okay. Uh, all right. That's, oh, one last thing. I'm sorry. Um, there's still a lot of confusion in my mind about what the role of GOL is in terms of the uh, goal setting for the town manager and the. Um, oh, uh, that was referred to us. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that should be on December 1st meeting. Yeah, and I'm not sure what I'm not sure what we're doing with it. Um, I have no idea. Um, we're, we're supposed to. Um, I mean, we're I guess the first. We're supposed to deal with that today. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the chair is completely clueless again. Um, uh, it's certainly not anything that Lynn has so, reached out uh, to me about. I am happy to draft a revised version of the goals that basically updates things that need updated in that, but doesn't change most of the substance, right? You know, there's, for example, one of the goals has assist the town council in drafting and adopting a comprehensive housing policy. And that's, there's things related no to that, longer, right. you know, like so updating needs, things right, instead right, of right. adopting, implementing, you know, it, I, I'm happy to draft a version of that. I don't know when that was supposed to be back at the council. It probably might have as soon as on, possible. It should be should be probably it probably should have Monday. been done today. Um, because um, that might be on the 22nd agenda. Yes. Um so what needs to be done is that document needs to be at least uh cleaned up in terms of what's already been attended to. And then the next step would be is there anything we uh counselors, not just GOL, but we counselors want to add. Right. Now that could still that could be in the first reading of it or the first presentation yeah. of the GOL revised goals uh, uh, document that would then prompt our colleagues to think oh what about this what about that so maybe that's the way to go rather than me sending out a last minute email saying do you have anything you want to put in this the real issue is just as you suggested Mandy getting it um, cleaned up for presentation to the council at Monday's council meeting. Um, and so again, touch base with Lynn on that. But um, I'll, I'll take a draft both, together. Yeah, we'll both take a crack at it and then we'll compare uh, notes. And Yeah, um, I'll, I'll take a crack and send it to you, George. And then you, you can do what you want with it okay. All right. before you send it to Lynn, if that's okay with Pat. Um, yeah, I just know I you. already have a lot of notes about, oh, that needs updated. Oh, that needs changed, you know, okay. in terms of just updates. So I just have to turn that into a track changes document. That would Thank be you. great. That would Thank be great. So send yeah. it to me. I will reach out to Lynn and hopefully get that on the agenda for Monday. And um, I will also include that in the report um, because you're right. Absolutely. That's something that, that should have been on the agenda for today. Um, so we'll consider that last 48 hours. Uh, due to faulty memory of the chair. Okay, anything else people can think of? All righty. Um, so we've had public comment. Um, it's a shame we don't have public comment like that every 
two weeks. That would make this job even more pleasant than it already is. Um, so thank you both very much. And thank you, George. Uh, yeah. Thank you, George, for yeah. all your work. Yeah. yeah, really. All right. Take care. See you. All right. Adjournment. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye, guys. <laughs>